a video probably and this told me for a while. Uh, so welcome to this session. We are going to talk about the education committee uh, and this follows on what uh, we have discussed on the previous session itself. Uh, so just to give an idea, as Rafan said, uh, this committee has been around for about nine months as well. Uh, and we are still, uh, uh, we have been deliberating, so we have had about five or six meetings of the committee so far, mostly online, or all of it online since the first face-to-face uh, -face meeting. And this is uh, the agenda for today's uh, meeting. So we basically, I'll just talk about these presentations, who are the people in the committee at the moment, what are the goals, and then uh, the objectives, and what has been the approach so far, how have the function so far, and uh, what they are looking forward uh, going forward. Uh, the second thing which uh, I'll talk about is a very specific project now. So we have decided that we'll take one project at a time. Uh, so the project we have decided for the first uh, trial is what I'll talk about a bit. And I'll explain why we uh, have did this approach and you know, why, why it was the reason behind that and the scope and the uh, goals are there. And uh, then, of course, uh, the whole idea of this meeting is to get more people involved and see if we can uh, do something together, uh, both in the short term as well as the long term. So that's uh, roughly the structure of the session today. So now uh, if you go, go to the EC3 website as well, uh, this is probably the goal of the, uh, again, it's really high up. But the goal is basically to uh, promote the research and innovation within the OPC3 in all matters that are related to education. So uh, one of the ways that we plan to work is uh, work with the other committees. So the education committee is, of course, planning for education. But then we work together with the other three commi committees to see what uh, kind of things we can deliver. Uh, so broadly, uh, there has been this sort of uh, initial ideas, which is to the committee should be able to help in review of the current educational programs so they are related to computing and construction uh, across the EU, uh, evaluate these uh, programs uh, for its usefulness, and then uh, hopefully based on these kind of findings like uh, white papers, uh, policy recommendations uh, for educational activities and initiatives that the board can take upon, and then uh, explore and develop new educational programs and products. So uh, having said that, uh, the development is largely still based on white papers and policies because this is the expect to be conducted, but primarily guide on what how the content should be delivered or you know, what kind of content is required and so on. Uh, so the current committee as of now is uh, I'm the chair from, from Alta University Finland, uh, then Angelo uh, from Italy, he's the vice chair, so as the file explained, uh, this is a rotational thing. Uh, or it changes so next year, so within a year, Angelo will become the chair. Uh, Andreas, who is from KTU and it's Kalmarsh Technical University in Lithuania, he's currently secretary and then he'll appoint a secretary and then that's how we move on. Uh, so, in addition to these members, we have other members who have been active in the discussion. Uh, so, we have Mohamed Kasim now, who's actually heading the uh, human data interaction uh, group. Uh, then we have uh, Sylvain from Luxembourg, uh, Pauline from Belgium, she comes from the industry, uh, then Alan and Barry from uh, Ireland. So uh, we have had about, as I said, four or five, five meetings. Uh, not everyone has been in all the meetings, but at least uh, most of the uh, office members have been, and the others have been around in some of the meetings. And uh, the way we have uh, gone about this, thinking about it is to have uh, tangible projects. Uh, the reason being that we are still a very new organization and uh, what we seek to do is to uh, kind of interact with industry and make policy and advisory uh, impact. And in order to be able to do that, we need very tangible uh, wins uh, early on. So, so that we have focused ideas, uh, focused uh, early projects so that we can deliver something which we can then take back to the industry and say, see, we are able to deliver something meaningful rather than trying to be very comprehensive right up front. So, and this has been uh, not easy because there's, for the last five meetings, we've had a lot of different ideas of what the education committee could do. Uh, and uh, from that viewpoint, we decided that maybe it's a good idea to take one of these problems to begin with, take that as an example, try to deliver something meaningful, and then hopefully uh, we can build on that. So uh, that's the basic idea. So the targets would be to do projects, uh, essentially uh, of this nature. Uh, and then that should lead to publications. Of course, it would be great if we can have academic publications as well, but white papers, as we have discussed, and policy recommendation reports. 
And the second part, which is, is also to uh, think of uh, potentially de uh, developing delivery mechanisms where uh, outcomes of the other committees could also go and be accessible to the SPAs, uh, as well as uh, what's going to happen at the summer schools. How does the educational committee get involved? I hope there is a dissemination of uh, the content and the other material from there. So these are things which are uh, ideas in progress, but these are the largely two groups of uh, you know, target activities that we are looking at, which are tangible deliverables. So as I said, we have had a lot of different types of uh, ideas discussed in the first couple of meetings, and then we have tried to narrow down since then. So the first idea was to look at the uh, curriculum development agenda covering various aspects of computing and construction. Um, this, I mean, of course, there are lots of other uh, platforms uh, in EU which are also doing similar things, but we really as focused on computing in construction, probably there's a gap. Look at these, so this was one of the ideas that came across. And then putting equal emphasis on vocational education and training. So not just look at university education, uh, but also look at vocational education as well as continuing professional development. How can we combine all these aspects? Uh, and here the work with the uh, professional associations will become extremely difficult. So they should help us, uh, you know, get insights of what their expectations are, what kind of programs will expect, and where will they expect the support of the educational committee. Uh, third thing which is related to the second part of the uh, deliverables, which is, is to look at whether we can provide platforms from sharing resources across different networks. And so it could be in form of curation or something else. Uh, we still haven't pinned down that yet. Um, another idea which has been uh, discussed is whether uh, we could have something like an EC3 body of knowledge similar to the uh, BMBOK sort of an approach, and whether that would be of interest to the community. Uh, and this is again, so if you look at the last four, they are somehow related uh, in terms of dissemination and sharing of information. So this uh, basically is again related to the this point, which is uh, creating knowledge repository, and whether that could uh, be useful. Uh, and uh, related to the first point, which is curriculum agenda, is to whether we can as collective uh, come up with some sort of a common program across the EU institutions. And it could also be related to uh, shared resources. So whatever we develop as common uh, content or you know, guidelines, that could be part of the uh, repository. So, uh, and there were many other ideas. So I just tried to put that here as a summary to show that you know, there's a lot of possibilities. And that's all the more reason that we need to start focusing with one uh, tangible Goals to begin So the first project uh, we decided after all this discussion, seeing that you know, there are lots of possibilities and that we are limited to resources, uh, is when um, I discussed with Rafael and suggested why not uh, take the uh, ISO 19650 and uh, I mean, dissemination of that and education related to that as the first goal because uh, that's where, where we can then collaborate with the modeling and simulations uh, committee and try to achieve this collective goal and see whether uh, this itself poses up. So this becomes for us a pilot project to see what educational committee can do uh, in terms of figuring out whether how do we actually, so the question that we have primarily is how to incorporate teaching of standards in educational programs. And similarly, not just for educational programs in terms of the educational institutions, uh, making it, uh, how do you integrate it so that it becomes part of it rather than just a standalone uh, reference to uh, standards, for example. So here we collaborate with the modeling and simulation committee, as I said, uh, and uh, the tentative, tentative goals. Uh, so we are still working on what are the tangible uh, objectives. The research proposal on that will be written in the next couple of months, which will then be put to the SPAs, uh, so that we see funding from them. Uh, the basic idea so far is that first of all we need to uh, kind of review what is the current practice of incorporating standards in education. So do in, uh, in universities do we actually introduce standards? How do we actually implement them in, in the curriculum? Uh, is it just a reference or does it somehow get embedded into uh, understanding and learning? Uh, so that's one part. The second part, which is connected to this, is then explore and develop integration methods. So what are the different ways um, in which we can actually incorporate that into the education program? So what are the delivery methods? What are the learning scenarios in context? So learning scenarios, one of course is your regular academic uh, courses, uh, which is done in the coursework. The second learning scenario is uh, vocational training. Then you could have people coming in with CPDs, 
as the people, professionals who are already working, how do we actually deliver these to them? And there could be similar other learning scenarios. So uh, identify those scenarios and develop strategies of how this kind of uh, standard could be delivered as part of our learning material. And then um, provide uh, examples and use cases, uh, which will be part of uh, sort of empirical work so, so that we can write uh, white papers and findings from there so we can return back to those videos. So uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to wrap it up so that we can start the opening of the discussion. So there are two levels at which um, uh, we are seeking uh, uh, active membership. Uh, one is to, it's an open agenda of course, so, we, so it's, uh, it's the first year, we're still uh, in a very open sort of situation. Is to look at is uh, what long-term burden uh, so people who are interested in gender and educational issues, uh, inviting them to be part of uh, the committee, and then uh, hopefully we can build the long-term plans for the educational committee. Uh, so that's where the uh, engagement participation on a regular basis is expected, where we can collectively drive the mission. Uh, the second part is very, very targeted sort of agenda, which is specific to the project. So in this case, the project is the 19650 and teaching of standards. Uh, so then it, it leads to uh, research and development activities where we can have people who might be interested in doing reviews and case studies. Uh, for example, in your uh, country and in your institutions, how are we actually dealing with uh, standards? Are we teaching them? How is it being delivered? How is it being delivered in the SBAs? What is the current practice of actually bringing these uh, standards into education? Uh, and then once we have decided or identified some frameworks or methods of delivering it, uh, we could do empirical work in different uh, countries and see whether we can learn something from there. So uh, this becomes a very targeted research and development activity related to the first project that I mentioned. And uh, from there we'll have the white, uh, white papers as well as potential like, academic publications. So anyone who participates here should be uh, able to co-author uh, the publications at the moment. Right, so with that, uh, that's the basic uh, template of what I wanted to discuss. Uh, so the first, uh, so let's start with an open discussion and then we'll come back to the specific project. And even uh, feedback, whether that's a good project to start with, uh, would be a great uh, feedback. We digress too fast. We don't have to be here for the entire time. Uh, I, uh, I will ask you a question. Uh, comments, right. suggestions. I think one of the, the things uh, uh, that we as academics need to address is, you know, I think you said, it, what do we teach in terms of uh, BIM, for instance, and how do we deliver it to the students? Yeah. Do we just teach the software uh, software use, I mean, Revit and DavidWorks, or do we teach them uh, IFCs, you know, the, the standards, the uh, uh, the integration between design, construction, operations, you know, things like that. And so I think it's one of the questions we are facing also at the University of I'm teaching, I'm te I'm teaching now. Uh, and, and the content we need to deliver at different levels, I mean, undergraduate, graduate, I think that's one of the things we need to uh, uh, decide and address. Right. Yeah. Any other follow-up comments? I'll have to just pop up the mic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think this is, this is a very valuable question. I, I think if we, if we want to encourage uh, collaborative thing, then we have to do all three things, right? So the data structures of uh, common software is, is not visible, and there's no understanding for information requirements so, so far. Uh, and and, uh, and and we we have to, I think we have to teach how uh, to do information management and how to create value out of models. Uh, and so this is basically future processes uh, and technology and adapting technologies to the new but that lies. But that implies the, the, the inclusion of people from across Disciplines, right? Yeah. It's not just us. You're talking about the designers, you're talking about the software, <coughs> software people, data science people, you know. So it, it's a little bit beyond our capabilities in a sense. 
Yeah, we, we started to do really interdisciplinary courses. Okay. But in, in professional further education, master program. So we have from, from all over okay, that's, that's important. down the line. Yeah. And this is, I think, a little bit necessary in the way, because this is a challenge as well. Yeah, it's a challenge and it has a lot of, uh, sorry, a lot of uh, inertia within the system. People don't like uh, interdisciplinary programs in a sense, because uh, you know, it requires a lot of effort. So, so yes, I, I, I think it's a good idea to teach uh, standards. But beyond standards, if you know standards, you don't have a pathway or a roadmap to a good construction or to a good design. Mm -hmm. yeah? So it's a, lot of, it's, it's a framework of understanding how to collaborate together. So this makes a difference. So, yeah. so it's, it is one, I think it's, it's necessary. But I think uh, collaboration um, needs different efforts. Yeah. Thank you. Can I come again? Yeah. During the discussion, and it's also I guess the students they are not ready to follow. It's not just the education of the system in two teachers. For example, uh, uh, I have strong doubts that my students can from a civil engineering department to be able to follow the, uh, the path that lies with the IT knowledge. So we need a lot of really support. Of course, yesterday, uh, yesterday, the panel said that um, just show the why you do that and what is behind that. And that will teach the practical things. And I absolutely believe that this is something. I mean, how you, 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 you work with the software is something you learn on the spot. So, of course, they should know. Uh, it, should, it should not be the first time when they go to, to, to the world to see the software. They should have some basics. But you should not uh, um, have all the course, all the lecture based on the on the software. But on the other hand, they are not prepared. Because uh, we are not prepared for this interdisciplinary. Yeah, so we need to find and identify these proper uh, educational tools that to do that and somehow manage the uh, effective uh, solution. I'm not adding something more that I'm just uh, following on the discussion of this and I there are really considerable issues. Mm -hmm. That's my question.
integrate the process. So this is this is how to how to use the tools. And then going to master science, uh, uh, thinking about uh, professional science, about uh, uh, separate disciplines like architecture or construction design or uh, uh, other systems. Uh, so we uh, uh, this is the next step. Uh, 
around uh, several countries regarding the, the level that we are now. And uh, we need, I guess, to, um, to promote this first stage. Of course, we can go ahead with this, but the gap should be not very large so that this is something now uh, with no uh, practical importance. We have to start from the beginning to see what is going on around the country and uh, see how we can improve that because it's difficult to, to change the curriculum just like that. And um, uh, so that we have a connection about what we are trying to develop and uh, uh, the way that the audience uh, uh, needs and uh, is able to, to follow. Otherwise, we will still have this gap. Okay. Right, so um, I, I thought they have uh, three comments on these, uh, and then we can continue the discussion. So there are two, three parts to it. One is, of course, that we are not just restricting our education to them. So we are saying computing in construction, which now there's a lot of different dimensions of computing in construction. So I think it's, it's, it would be naive for us to limit ourselves to BIM because now we have, we are talking about AI, we are talking about drone technology, laser scanning. So there are very, very, various dimensions of computing that we need to bring in. And as we are seeing in the discussion already, that even as something like BIM, which has been around for 10, 15 years now, we are struggling to integrate that. So as more technologies come in, more computing enters the civil engineering program, are we ready for it or how do we actually prepare for that? So that's uh, one question is that let's not limit ourselves to BIM per se. The second uh, thing I think was interesting to hear examples like we had in Vilnius, uh, and I'm sure that at many other places we have our own strategies of teaching and we have curriculums which have been around. So uh, one way to look at uh, the effort of the committee would be that we compare the courses and look at the good or the bad. Uh, but that also would require that everyone collectively puts the effort because the committee as such will not have the resources to, again, uh, you know, review everything. So it has to be uh, you know, crowdsourced in some way where members actively present what they are doing and then we can somehow put it together. Uh, the third aspect, which is this, uh, when I talked about uh, taking the first project of the standards, so that's a pilot project uh, in the sense that so we need not be limited with our thinking about standards. But the reason we chose standard is because there are many standards that are around. And typical way for, and that's my hypothesis or conjecture, that typical way we introduce standards in our curriculum is that it gives this facility to students saying, these are the standards that you should use. So it's a very descriptive or prescriptive way of saying that do that. Mm -hmm. But why those standards are the way they are, right? So that's an example that I'm, uh, we are taking. That if you have to teach something like, if you have to introduce something like a standard, which is just descriptive, you know, is, what is the best way to introduce it? You just leave it saying, okay, use these standards, or do you explain why these standards, or why it works, why it doesn't work? So, because uh, our role, so we are not developing content as a committee. We, are, uh, we have to identify what, what is it that we can bring in, uh, which is, uh, you know, so we have to, of course, look at the, every academic, every institution will develop its course in their own way. But what is it that could be common, which we could provide as a policy guide? So it would be good to have some input on that. If you can reflect on that and maybe uh, share your views on that. So, so what I'm trying to understand is what should be the role of the C3 educational committee in that? Because we cannot prescribe, uh, you know, curriculum, but we can definitely have guidelines and you know, policies on how, should, how it, we should go about doing it. What, what I thought out. Um, for instance, in Switzerland, is that the notion of standards really are changing. Huh? You can see standards as enabling of new business models huh? and induce and be open for disruptive technologies, yeah. for instance. Or, or you can define it as a common sense and of understanding how to do engineering or stuff like that. So this is this is basically what they have in Switzerland. They are not prepared. For the for the second thing, you know, we introduce it. You know, the second thing, and what I learned from you and uh, from from all the experience, we have to train the trainers, right? Yes. So they are not prepared at all. Huh? The students are either, but uh, but it's not depending on the age and generation. Most of people are uh, longing for a long time to use IT 
to be more productive, to be more creative and stuff like that. So uh, I, I think we I think we should have uh, we should develop guidelines how to 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 handle this and what what is good practice. And I think we, we have to learn from each other. So we are in a second generation student and our students are already driving the change. But in our own but in our own university the the architects are only focused on design. And many of them say okay even architects should more care about uh, the execution and, uh, and, and, and the details and stuff like that. And uh, they, they say our problem is packed to the limits. We can't afford more. But um, others are starting. Yeah? And we see young architects starting with a, with a renovation project with drones and stuff like that. So they, they burden themselves to the heaviest load thinkable in, in practice at, at that way. And it would be helpful to say, okay, if you would like to start, try something in that way, and this, this will help you to develop. Or, or they don't have. And, you know, and other, other thing, I, some of my colleagues, they, they, they lack the imagination what we can do with IT. Huh? Completely. Yeah. And, and, and this is a, another barrier. So, so we have to open up that in an understandable way. Yeah. Any other comments? So, so I think there are two interesting points here. One of course, as you said, is uh, we have to find mechanisms of training the trainers in some way. Because there's so much changing and so much to cover. Uh, that we, are, we do not necessarily always get the faculty to cover all these dimensions. The second is, uh, for most curriculum, I think uh, everyone is a feeling, everywhere there is a feeling that you know, it's already packed. Uh, and so how do you introduce new content in there? And this is something I came from my own experience at Alto, what I did, started doing was uh, last three years, I did a summer school. And the advantage of the summer school was that, uh, and it was an international summer school, it is outside the regular curriculum. Those who want to get that aspect uh, are, you know, are free to come in. It's a six to seven days or you know, nine days sort of uh, program. And, and uh, it's very versatile. So you're not constrained by you know, the academic curriculum. Yeah. And what it does is it allows you to introduce new content which you can't introduce there. So, so similar things could be a finding that we are in potentially the outcome of uh, this sort of uh, white paper could come out. But that's the, so that's a delivery method that uh, probably uh, yeah. one dimension to that. So similarly, we could also look at potentially uh, what is it, uh, what are the issues that we cannot cover in a traditional course, uh, and that could be a recommendation that we go to the summer, uh, summer school, the ECD summer school as well. So anything on that side would also be a good input. Session that has to do with 
and how are you educating on paper? So uh, it could be in the middle or long term feedback, but it could be actually anything because uh, uh, and we could have uh, some uh, some some uh, some sort of conjugators as well that are not I don't know about the participation in the inertia about how you teach it you know the new tricks things like that. So maybe we could have a strategy of trying to uh, approach future educators, something like that. And, and, and I think that is something that could be done to find the sound school I think that's a good yeah. Any any other points? So uh, so another dimension as you were stating about uh, educating the I mean, these uh, PhD students as uh, future educators. Uh, it certainly occurred to me on another dimension. So this uh, I'm currently working on uh, a book sort of idea on hill thinking. And the reason I started looking at that is that uh, uh, they are, so even if you look at uh, Jim Curry come across uh, different places, uh, there are different dimensions of it. So if you go to, for example, the Dan Jones, it's very much on the IoT based, uh, you know, the bigger hands on uh, open uh, platform sort of thing. And then uh, in other places, it's basically just modeling with uh, you know, the tools as a user rather than getting deeper into the systems. Uh, and there are different other potential dimensions of image education which probably we lack at the moment. That's where at least been thinking and where I thought there's a gap. So uh, is, is, is there a room for also making recommendations of what kind of content is missing in this entire uh, dimension of human education? Right? So uh, uh, is there any, any view on that? So what was uh, your experience in Amazon, for example? If you could share that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we, we try to teach different aspects of this for the last 20 years or so, uh, and uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know where to begin, but I, I think, I mean, we had the same experience I, as I hear from other friends who are the part of the students really, and, and uh, what I think we experienced many times that, that yeah, the students were not ready to understand when we try to teach them and so on, so they need the hands-on first maybe experience uh, the chances in terms of using between the uh, tools and so on before they understand you know, why we need them and fail. And then uh, and we have a challenge, for example, with our engineering studies, I mean, they are normally very narrow. So I mean, we, te we teach, uh, we have a structure in the education. Then they, they think, or we teach them that the only structure in the music system is that they don't see the need for cooperation with others. Determined they were there. So, I, I mean, yeah, we have some internal challenges in, in, in making the students ready to understand the need to know and to have this knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I mean, yeah, and then we have, we have different ways to try to learn. Yeah. Generally, I think that this. Bachelor level, we have more tool oriented courses, and that's all what we see in, in other at the university colleges. Uh, and when we have them, I, I mainly work with the art of science level, and uh, yeah, that's where we should improve all this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we, yeah, we expect basically they, they have experience with tools from the bachelor level, and they should be ready to understand some of this, but they don't always. So, of course, yeah, so we try to do it. To, very project based, so, so we have that uh, we have this problem based and group based uh, learning at local university. So half, half of the students' time is actually making projects in groups with other students. Uh, so so they, they learn from each other and they, they are forced to make some kind of project uh, where they have conversation using the tools and, and, uh, and try to experience this challenge of making communication between the disciplines. And we try to do something similar in, in, the, in the courses themselves. Right. Yeah. Anyone else has any interest in that? All right. It seems uh, we are kind of narrowing down. So, so, uh, so maybe we can try to conclude this in, in terms of uh, two things. One is, is uh, 
at the level of the project, the first project, we take that just as a pilot to understand different dimensions of the problem. So how, uh, who would be interested in you know, that as a, as a topic that we could actually get a bit more in the research and development side to, to work towards a white paper. The second, of course, is uh, uh, I think we all have pain points in education and we are all struggling with the same. So I hope uh, there will be uh, active participation in the community. So if, uh, just uh, send me an email at uh, vishal.sing at also uh, anyone is interested and then we can uh, build on that. Uh, any other, uh, so, so at this stage of course, you um, have uh, narrowed down the first one just as a pilot, but ideas are welcome, suggestions on where we should head towards with the education committee and how we should avoid the educational committee being like many other educational groups which we have in the EU. I think we are still uh, trying to find that space. So uh, it needs more collaboration and more people to get involved. So with that, I will close it. Thank you all and then hopefully we have the meeting today. Thank you. Thank you.